Ms. Marvel Mutant Menace number one. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to review this comic using my space system. Story, pacing, artistry, characters, enjoyment. Each category gets a score between zero and two. Choose the best you can get in any category. So this is the next uh, mini series of Ms. Marvel. I reviewed the first mini series incomplete on other videos. So check those out. Um, I liked that last series. Uh, I think the first couple issues I thought they were okay. And it kind of the last issue was pretty neat. Um, I never mention, uh, the creative team behind comics because I like to just review the comic as the comic. Sometimes there's a bias. If you, I don't even read the credits. Uh, sometimes there's a bias. Um, if you, you know, sometimes you read a name, you're like, oh man, I don't, you know, this guy and, uh, and then, and then it might turn you off on the book. So I like to just read the book as it is. And then that's it. Uh, however, this one is written by Iman Villani, well, co-written and, um, so she's Canadian. Um, we're Canadian. We support our Canadian people. Um, obviously, she plays Ms. Marvel in the MCU, and her show was like, mm, we're, we're, you know, like not that great. <laughs> um, and you know, the Marvels was really not that great either. But um, I didn't mind her comic, so it is kind of interesting, and I guess it's neat that you've got the the actor or like actress uh, doing the comic. It'd be interesting, like, what if Ryan Reynolds? did a Deadpool. Maybe he did do a Deadpool. I don't know, but that'd be kind of an interesting thing. So I'm just saying that just as just like, you know, a little asterisk, a little interesting to note, um, thing. But for me, the storyline, I'm going to give it a one. Um, look, it's okay. I understand that, you know, she's stuck with this mutant thing. Um, I'm a big time X-Men fan. Um, I, my channel was mostly X-Men related when it started. Um, I was reviewing every X-Men title or mutant title that came out. Uh, you know, Ms. Marvel being an Inhuman is fine. I don't understand why they need to make her a mutant now. I feel that this character is just like being like st stretched uh, to all these extremes. Oh, she's like this cosmic thing in the TV show, which was kind of a fail. Um, and then, uh, but she's got stretchy powers, but now she's a mutant also. So I, I, I don't know. It, it's hard to get a handle on what the hell's going on with this character. Out of all of the new characters, and I don't want this to, I'm not saying this to offend anyone, but out of all of the sort of the diversity characters, I actually like Ms. Marvel in the sense that she's not just a copy of, of Marvel. She's not a copy of Carol. Um, she's her own power set. So I thought that was kind of neat. And if they would have said she was a mutant from the beginning, then I would have been like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, but if they went with Inhumans, then just leave it as an Inhuman. Like, that's fine. Um, it does separate it. Like, for example, I'm not a ma massive Miles Morales fan because it's just Spider-Man. Like, I don't see anything, you know, from what I have seen in the car animated movies and stuff, he's just like a Peter Parker. It's like, oh, okay. So that's not anything to me. Um, America Chavez, I, I just can't get into that character at all. She's just, I don't know. I, it's like, she's she was like, she was okay in that Doctor Strange movie, I guess, but like, in comics, I just, no, I can't do it. Uh, what other characters? But you you know what I'm saying. Like, a lot of them were just copies. It's like, oh, this is just a copy of some other character. It's like, well, okay. You know, I do like uh, X-23, but it's just, you know, she's a Wolverine, right? Like, it's it, 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 there's not anything kind of, like, unique about it. Um, but Ms. Marvel is different, so I do like that. Uh, I do like that about Ms. Marvel. But still, the storyline, it's there's a lot of... <clears throat> you know, her just meandering around and things like that. And that usually kind of just like makes it slow for me. Um, so it's the Orcus stuff, which I'm really tired of. I'm really tired of Orcus. Um, she's trying to, Ms. Marvel's trying to do the, you know, good thing, help the people, but she's not liked or trusted. So it's the whole mutant angle, which um, I don't understand. I mean, obviously if the mutants took over the entire planet and forced everyone to do stuff that people wouldn't like them, I, I think I think we lost what's going on with X Men. It, it was supposed to be the the humans hate and fear you, but you're still protecting them anyways from people who really do want to hurt them. Um, I always thought that was the the cool, unique thing about X Men, and that usually meant that the reader was on the side of the X Men because if you're a comic book reader, you're probably you were probably nerdy, probably felt like a bit of an outsider. So the X-Men spoke to you, you're like, oh man, yeah, I could be an X-Man and, and have a little family of, of other people, other geeks and nerds or, or freaks or whatever. And then we're all together, and, but we're still helping people because we love superhero stuff. 
And I think they lost that. Um, so I understand that they're stuck with that angle in this comic, but still, um, I feel like there really isn't much progress in, progression in this comic. There's a lot of just pages where it's like people talking about stuff that like, does this even matter to this story? So um, this guy shows up, he's kind of neat. I'll get to the characters. <clears throat> um, for the pacing, I'll also have to give it a one because um, for the reasons I just outlined, it, it it's pretty slow. Like, I don't know how many pages this is, but it's a thicker one. So what's the price on this one? This is a $4.99 or so. I, I believe it's a, it's, it feels a little thicker um, than than most comics. So, I mean, I guess it's a number one of a, of a, of a mini series. So they want to like fill it up. But I really feel like this could have been probably half the length. I like action. I think Ms. Marvel can... Uh, stretchy people can do very cool visual things because it's just things that you're not used to seeing. There are some things in here where like, even something really interesting happens in the beginning where like her hand, she, she grabs a grenade and uh, where the hell is it? Oh, here it is. So she grabs a grenade and it blows up in her hand, gets all like flop, like gloopy. So that's kind of neat. There's a part here too where she's falling. Uh, she gets nailed and she falls down and she uses her hands to like cup herself. I don't know where it is now, but she like cups her entire... So you could do a lot of visually interesting things with stretchy powers, like Plastic Man, who's just not even a stretchy guy. He's more like a morphing character, but like Mr. Fantastic. Um, you could easily do some cool things, but if they're just standing around and talking, then I feel like you're not using this character's visual potential. Um, speaking of the art, I will also give the art a one. It feels very standard Marvel art. Like it's like, yep, that was... You know, it's good. I, I can't draw, so, you know, it's better than I know what I, what I can do. Um, oh, there you go. There's that part I was talking about. She, like, cups herself as she's falling. So you could do a lot of fun visual things with the art here. Oh, yeah, these, the, the horticulture or whatever they're called, they, they show up, these old ladies. There's some funny parts here where Ms. Marvel says, oh, I'm beating up <laughs> some old lady senior citizens. Or, <laughs> um, they're kind of funny. But yeah, um, this last part is is okay. The pacing and the uh, it picks up definitely in the end. But art, yeah, look, I like the art. It's fine. Um, so I'll give it a one as just a pass. Um, but art. Speaking of art and X Men, uh, BeardedShirts.com, which is my channel sponsor, they just sent me this bad boy right here. This is a print all over, so it's on both sides. X Force with Deadpool, Wolverine, and Shatterstar, Rob Liefeld's art. I'm a Rob Liefeld fan. Uh oh, be careful. Uh, BeardedShirts.com is awesome. They always have sales on. Check out the link in the description below. Um, and if you decide to join the channel as a member, as a Legionnaire, so Legionnaire tier, uh, we enter you into a draw uh, every month to win something from Bearded Shirts. So there you go. Um, so for the characters, I'll also give it a one. I Look, I, I do like Ms. Marvel. So <clears throat> this planter guy, like, I mean, you know, he's there. You got Deadpool in here and, and Wolverine talking, and I mean, it's fine, but it's just talking. <clears throat> like, if you can use Deadpool and Wolverine in your comic, have them do something that's action-oriented, you know what I, I, I mean? I think this is a product of a lot of modern comic book thinking, whereas I'm thinking, oh, Ms. Marvel, what does she do? Well, she's a mutant now. Oh, okay, so she's a mutant. All right, check, yeah. Okay, well, she's got stretchy powers. Like, hmm, stretchy powers, okay. I would stretch those powers to the limits. Like every, I'd have like massive like arms coming and punching and, and grabbing guys and throwing shit. Like I, I like this character needs to be a bit more, I don't wanna say silly. Maybe silly is not the word I'm looking for, but like it needs to be a bit more fun. Like not, it doesn't have to be exactly a villain of, a, of the week. Maybe, you know, a two-parter, like it's like a, a villain she introduced in one, fights him again. And you know, there needs to be more action. There needs to be more fun, right? Ms. Marvel is going to be a fun character. You're not, I don't, I, you can tell serious stories if you want to, um, but I think to start off, it needs to be a lot of fun where you're like, wow, that was really cool. You know, like you should post, I think after you read Ms. Marvel, you should have a smile on your face. Be like, oh man, that was really a lot of fun. I like that. Um, I think Magnificent Ms. Marvel had a couple of good issues uh, that were like that. So uh, for the overall enjoyment factor, I'll give it a number, I'll give it a one. So uh, I'll give it a five out of 10. Um, based on my system, a five is, is sort of your passing grade. Like I am going a little bit easier on this because I actually really do like Ms. Marvel, um, the character, 
Um, I, th I actually think the X-Men costume kind of looks cool on her. Um, it, so, I, look, it's a visual thing. I think it looks cool. Like, this cover is pretty nice. I like that, you know, uh, for a posy cover. But I think it's just that for what you're expecting, or at least what I expect out of, out of a comic for Ms. Marvel, I expect a little bit more fun. Um, we'll see how it goes. The last series was... Um, I think it started off a bit slow as well. And then the last, it's almost like you could take, I can't remember, I think it was four parts. You could probably take the first issue and the fourth issue and just put that together. And then you just have the thing, right? I feel like there's a lot of just like, oh, let's write about her life, you know, at school and what, and that's fine. But it's just like, there's nothing interesting going on there. So it's just meandering at school. Like, I don't care. Uh, but anyways, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like my space review system, please like the video and uh, consider subscribing. That's it, everybody. Until next time.